Yo guys, it's Lyra. You already know that today I'm bringing you guys my battle for week one of season three of the TBU. And today we are taking on Jack, also known as Just Weavile, and the Wolverhampton Weaviles. And this is week one. Oh my gosh, we made it! Alright, so, <laughs> um, the team analysis to this battle went up yesterday. If you want to know what I'm bringing, um, in full detail, my thought process, all that stuff, and, you know, all that good stuff. You know how it is. Um, team analysis videos will be going up on Thursdays. Battle videos will be going up on Fridays. So it's as simple as that. And if you missed it, I will leave a link to the team analysis video in the description below. Also in the description below will be a link to Jack's channel. So definitely go check him out. Um, because everybody in the TV this season are really cool people. And I'm really excited to beat every single one of them. So... <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and just move on to this battle. As you can see, Jack brought a team that consists of Slowking, Agron, Manectric, Mega Metacham, Landorus, T, and Crobat, which means that there's no Volcarona, which is cool. I kind of started to think that he might not bring it, um, but I did have a lot of preparation for it. Um, there is no Venusaur, um... I was kind of thinking that he was going to bring either Venusaur or Manectric, and you can see that he decided to bring Manectric, which is very understandable, um, just to, like, deal with Manaphy and all that good stuff. And he did not bring Bisharp, which I was really, really excited about. Now that I see my team, I can kind of see why he didn't bring it, but it was just one of those mods that, like, I know that it's very easy for it to set up a Sword Stance sometimes, um, you know, I don't really have a whole lot on, you know, my team to deal with priority, at least not the one I built. So, you know, I just really did not want to deal with it, and, um, yeah, I really wasn't actually expecting Slowking to come that much. Um, it is bulky, but I just don't, th I didn't think that it could do a lot to my team. Um, but you know what, yeah, we're, we're gonna see as, as we get to, uh, into this match. Um, the basics of what I brought, um, are a defensive Calm Mind Manaphy with Rest and Rain Dance, Scald as his only attack. I have a Scarf Caballion with Rocks, um, and a couple attacks. Uh, especially defensive Arcanine, with both Will-O-Wisp and Toxic, uh, as well as Flare Blitz, I believe it's its only attacking move. We have a Focus Sash Alakazam, uh, with four attacks, and a Assault Vest Electivire, um, to deal with that Manectric, and anything else that, you know, wants to attack it, and a Life Orb Flygon, uh, mixed attacking Flygon, so... If you want to know all that in detail and why I'm bringing that, you know, again, check out the team analysis. If you guys want to, you know, stick around and stay for the battle and see what this happened and all about, go ahead and stay. So, basically, the implications for this season is there is playoffs. The top three teams from each division play, will go to the playoffs. And we play every single person in our division and one cross-division match. So, every single game is very, very important. Because with a win, we not only move ourselves closer to the playoffs, we also move one of our division rivals further away from the playoffs. So, starting off with a win is huge. There's also a little bit of pressure on me because um, you guys definitely should check out the TBU Power Rankings. Um, this season, they're going to be doing weekly recaps and power rankings in the same video. Um, I wouldn't bother going to check out the first one unless you really want to because I'm about to spoil it. Um, but there's a little bit of pressure. They put me second in the power rankings, the preseason power rankings. No one's ever, ever thought that I've had a good team, or at least not good enough, to put me second overall. And they put Jack 16th. Now, I, I don't think he has a bad team. When I go and I break it down, I think he's got a lot of scary threats. But that's a lot of pressure. That's like, I'm being expected to win. I'm never expected to win. And so I kind of went into this game with a lot of pressure, but, um, you know what? I figured let's do it. So, let's go ahead and get into the match. I decided that I did not need rocks up right away because the only thing that is even somewhat weak to rocks is Crobat, which can then just defog them away. So I was like, I don't think that is the best thing to start out with right now. So I'm going to lead off with Manaphy because I think he's going to lead off with the Landers or the Meg Metacham, both of which Manaphy, um, can threaten out with the Scald. And then maybe I can even burn something. So that would be um, really, really cool. And he actually starts out with the Crobat. Um, so, I mean, even if I got a Brox, he might have just defogged it right away. 
Um, I still had no reason to do anything else besides just Scald first turn because uh, even like Choice Bandit Brave Bird, uh, I still think did less than 50% or around 50%. Um, and he goes into the Slow King, so this is kind of a matchup where I don't really have a lot, like I don't have a coverage move for Slow King on this Manaphy. And I captured it later in the match, and a plus six. If I'm a, if I set up six Calm Minds, a Scald still does about 49% maximum to a max HP Slow King. That's not even specially defensive. That's just max HP, max special attack. So um, that is you know a thing. Plus, I need to figure out what this Slow King is. I actually kind of make a somewhat offensive switch into um, Alakazam. I do have a Focus Dash, uh, you know, Slow King, unless it's like Specs probably isn't going to take me out with anything, except for maybe a Shadow Ball, which I didn't think he was going to go for. He actually reveals Yawn. And I was like, alright, so let's just keep scouting his moveset. I made a really risky play here. I really didn't think he was going to go for the Scald, but now that I look back on it, uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense that he did. If I got burned here, that would have sucked, because Electivire is really important to me in this match, and I do not have a Cleric. Thankfully, he does not get the, the, um, the burn. And, um, I make the prediction right away. You don't make predictions this early in the match, but guess what? I just did. I go for the Ice Punch, there's no way he's staying in. BAM! Now, of course, that doesn't kill the landers just because of the Intimidate. Um, but that really weakens it, and I'm very, very happy about that. I don't have a whole lot of switch to this landers. Um, so, I switch in to Flygon. Important to note, I switched out before the landers. That means that that landers is not Scarfed, which is what I was kind of expecting. I thought it was going to be Scarfed. Um, I go for the Earth Power because, I mean, dude, why not? I don't know what this Aggron's going to do. It might be able to get Ice Punch, but honestly, if I can get off a big hit, that's all Flygon really needs to do. But it has a red card. Okay, so now I know that this Aggron's not banded and not Scarfed, so I can deal with this really, really well. And then, I get red carded into Manaphy. My physically defensive Manaphy. Look how much the Heavy Slam did. I think I'm okay. You know what I mean? So, and he also revealed Sturdy, so he doesn't have Rockhead, you know, so uh, head smashes are definitely less likely to be a thing. So I'm going to start setting up some Calm Minds and see what he's going to do about it. Now, this series of plays um, is me, it's a mixture of me kind of underestimating my opponent and just being really, really greedy. Um, if I set up to plus three, I can... Uh, take less than 50% from Manectric, and I don't actually remember the calc, I, I feel like I don't think that Specs Manectric, that might just be like a regular one, um, but all I needed to do is set up to plus 3, and I would have been okay, or I could have just scalded this dude at any time, you know, and uh, we would have been fine. But I set up the Rain Dance, because I'm, I'm getting ready to rest, you know, and show him that he really cannot wear me down. Um, misses the Stone Edge, uh, no big deal. I believe that one was a misclick. He told me that one of those Stone Edges was a misclick, and the move he meant to go for was the one that he goes for here, and I should have known this was coming. He was just setting up some rocks and getting some damage, and then he's going to roar me out. I should have seen this one coming. I should have just scalded and killed this thing. I still would have had a plus two, plus two mana fee, and depending on the calcs, I might have been able to deal with whatever else he brought in. Um, I had the rain up, like, I, I don't know, I, well, I wouldn't have had the rain up, but I just go ahead for the Ice Punch because it either kills the Aggron or does a lot to anything that switches in, because I didn't think he was going to switch into Slow King directly. Um, ah, man, it really, really sucks, but he's going to bring in Mega Medicham, which uh, sucks for me because I don't have a lot to deal with. I make a very, very stupid prediction, and I go into Cabalion because I'm just like, oh, he's probably just going to go for Fake Out, get his free Mega off. Because if he doesn't do that, you know, I can do a lot of damage to him with the Electivire. Um, and, you know, he just wants to guarantee his Mega. But, uh, no. Cabalion shows his worth um, by just coming in to be sacked off from full health. Now, to be fair, Cabalion really wasn't doing much for me this match. I wanted it for rocks for the Volcarona. Um, I had it to do a lot of damage. I had moves for, like, the Bisharp and the Volcarona. So it wasn't really doing a lot for me this match. So it was kind of a calculated risk. But at the same time... <laughs> I just sacked off a Cabalion from full health. I could have made the straight switch into Alakazam, and uh, I would have been okay. But I'm going to go for the Shadow Bomb, because that's the move of choice to hit the uh, Mega Metacham. Now, um, Slow King has the leftovers and did a little bit more than half, and I'm trying to look at the calcs, I'm just like, this looks like it might be a roll. It's really, really hard to tell, so I have to go for another Shadow Bomb just to try. It does not take it out. He goes for the Slack Off. Um, plus the recovery, I can clearly see 
that he will win this 1v1 matchup. And I now know I need to get Slowking under half before I can take it out with this Alakazam. Um, uh, in terms of the Electivire, I have to get it to, I think Electivire to 74% minimum to a max HP Slowking, um, which is what I'm still kind of just operating with that, that he is. And uh, I go into Manaphy because I realize that I can, or like, I'm feeling that I can set up on the Slowking, because I don't think it's a Calm Mind Slowking, so we're not going to have a Calm Mind off. If we're both Calm Mind, Slowking wins that one because he has Psy Shock, and that will do a lot more. Um, he goes for Tailwind, uh, which I then, it kind of crossed my mind, I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, he's going to go into Mega Medicham, Mega Medicham behind a Tailwind, like, with the Tailwind support, I was, like, freaking out, I was like, what do I do, 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 um, but, I'm just going to keep going for Skullin, because, I was like, maybe I can, I can burn the Mega Medicham that's definitely coming in, you know, and it'll be good, he gets a crit U-turn there, no big deal, and, um, Oh man, I was freaking out. But he goes into Slowking, so he abandons that idea, I suppose. So, now we have this 1v1 thing going on again. And uh, I believe this is a, a time that I try and... I either try and set up on him, or I just try and get to full health on him. Because right now I've only seen Scald as his attack. I've seen Yawn, you know, and whatever. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, he's going to go for Future Sight, and I was like, oh, well then, I did not see that one coming. Ah, you see Future Sight? Okay, um, so, <laughs> I start having to calculate what Future Sight's going to do to me, and it's going to do almost 50%, you know, for max special attack sloking, um, if it is. Um, I'm going to go for Calm Mind. I don't actually know how that works if Calm Mind, like, will affect the damage that you take from Future Sight when it does end up coming. Um... But uh, we'll get to that when it happens. Uh, he went for Yawn. And I learned a thing today. I learned a game mechanic. You guys ready for this? So, Rain Dance. I want to get to full health. Uh, the way to get to full health is to rest. And then the status is gone at the end of the turn. Right? Alright, well he switches in to Manectric. Probably knowing that, the worst I can do is Scald, which probably isn't going to kill him. But I'm going to rest. Or he thinks I'm going to switch out because he just yawned me. But I rest, and I become healthy, and I get to full health. And I take the future side attack. Okay, that's kind of getting in the middle. And you see it doesn't do that much. Like, uh, you know, then I woke up. I get my leftovers. And I go back to sleep because he yawned. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that that happened. But now I know that happens. So, fun fact, that happens. Um, but yeah, the Future Sight did way less than the Calc did, so I don't know if the Calm Mind affected that or not. Um, I switched into Electivire because that's my switch in to, um, whatchamacallit. And now I'm plus one speed, and I outspeed basically everything. So, that worked. Um, but yeah, so you can't cure sleep twice in one turn. <laughs> and rest does not get rid of the effects of Yawn. So I go for the Ice Punch, and I almost take out Crobat. Um, because of my plus one speed, I am free to go for it again. He also reveals Black Sludge Bane that he isn't even any sort of like super quick Crobat. Um, so Electivire kills Crobat. Picking up its first kill of the match, and that is the first kill for the Super Power of the season, and it's done by Electivire. Um, he brings in the Slow King. I think at this point I haven't switched up moves at all, so I'm kind of trying to bluff the Scarf because I'm hoping that it will, you know, work out eventually. The only thing that Manaphy can kind of 1v1 is the slow game. Alright, so right now, I just need to try and burn off some sleep turns. I know he isn't, um, Calm Mind version. He's not going to set up. He can't do anything to me. Um, but he's going to go into the landers. Alright, so I'm still asleep. And I was just like, alright, well... Um, I haven't been counting sleep turns, I don't know if this is one or two, but I can take an Earthquake, no problemo, and I can just wake up, go for the Scald, and it's fine. Uh, also, after the Leftovers, it looks like I will live another Earthquake, but oh wait, nope, Future Sight. <sighs> so, I don't know if there's a chance for me to, to wake up there, I actually forget, but I'm gonna switch out, because I can use it as Death Fodder later. I have kind of failed in my first showing of using Manaphy. Um, you know, it sucks, but 
is what it is. It goes for knockoff, knocks off my life orb. Um, no big deal. Because I'm still gonna outspeed it, I'm still gonna go for a Draco Meteor, and this Landers is going to die. So the second kill of the season is gonna be picked up by Flygon. First two kills of the season are Electivire, Flygon. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. I absolutely love it. You know, keep underestimating them. They are great Pokemon in their own right. Um, I hesitate to call Flygon great, but whatever. Um, at this point, I'm just kind of deciding what I want to deal with this. I could have just sacked off Manaphy and kept Flygon around because it outspeeds the Mega Metacham, uh, which means it's another way for me to get damage. Um, but I just decided to, you know, do damage to it. To the Slow King that was in front of me. If I had the Life Orb, that would have done about closer to 50%, um, which is would have been a lot more ideal. But regardless... I'm just going to go into the Electivire, and I predicted him to switch out so many times, I figured that he might stay, and I went for the Thunder Punch, and I was right. Um, and he goes for the Scald, and um, he doesn't burn, and I live. So, uh, there's that. Now, I figure he's going to switch out. Um, and I believe I predict this-ish. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do, because I was just like... He's definitely going to predict this and the Thunder Punch. Rock Slide uh, had a chance to kill Slow King from where it was at, so that's why I went for Rock Slide. Um, and then there's that. I stayed in because I was actually just going to sack off the Electivire. Like, everything on Jack's team outspeeds the Electivire. Uh, but now I have a Choice Scarf. He just gave me a Choice Scarf, dude. Like, I don't think you understand. But now I'm Choice into Ice Punch. Um, he knows that. And knows that he can go back into Slow King. So... That's a thing. I can either stay in, let him get up to full health and kill me, or I can switch out because I looked at it and I calced it, and I can live one more rock switch in. So, that is going to be, you know, kind of important because, you know, whatever, I can live. So this is when I sack off Manaphy because I just wanted a clean switch into Alakazam, I believe. I didn't want to be taking too many Scalds. I actually um, still have my Focus Ash intact. For the Alakazam, um, which could definitely come into play at the end of the match, because we are getting ourselves towards the end game. Okay, now I skipped a, I skipped a couple turns. My bad. I go to Arcanine. Obviously, I didn't want to take two skulls with Arcanine, but um, this Slowking is really getting on my nerves. It's not dying, so I'm gonna Toxic it, put it on a timer. It cannot stay in and outstall my entire team. It just can't. So he goes for the Scald, right? 148, 64. Okay. Now I kind of look at it. I was like, wait a minute. 76. Alright. So look at the health. We're at 76 health now. I, uh, look and I took, I think, 46% from that skull. Meaning, I could just stay in and kind of outstall it. I can rack up toxic damage and, um, not die in the process. As long as he doesn't get a crit, um, it's good. So I'm Morning Sun up. He goes for the Scald, I get leftovers, and now I'm over, oh, well, I'm sorry, plus Future Sight Attack. Um, if that wouldn't have happened, I would have been over um, 100 health, but like I saw clearly that I had more health from that Scald than I did before. Basically, I am taking less damage from the Scald than I am getting back from Morning Sun plus leftovers. So I'm just going to let the, the Toxic Damage keep racking up. I want to keep Arcanine healthy. If I can exit this exchange with Arcanine being at a really, really good amount of HP, that means that I can um, deal with the Mega Meta Cham because I can get an Intimidate off on it and all that good stuff. So that's kind of the plan. Um, I can't really afford for Arcanine to go to sleep because then the Slow King does beat me in this little 1v1 matchup. You can see that Toxic Damage is starting to really rack up. Um, so I don't think he's going to start slacking off, and if he does, he can only really do it once, because after that, it's just not really worth it. So I go into Alexam hoping that he was going to slack off, but he does switch out, and he is going to go into the Manectric. Now, um, I was under the impression that I would outspeed, but I kind of forgot to speed creep the Manectric. I only sped crept the base 100s, which this actually kind of works out in my favor right now. Um, because instead of killing the Manectric, now I get to start dealing with either the Sloking or the Mega Metacham, whatever he decides to switch in. I get a crit Shadow Ball, um, which technically doesn't matter, 
a second Shadow Ball would have killed regardless, so he would have either had to sack this off or switch out and, and like take damage on something else. I think he was just sacking this off so that crit does not matter. Um, Alakazam is going to pick up a kill, and now we are, uh, you know, getting getting close to the end game. My sash has been broken though, so I really have to look. Um, Mega Metacham doesn't take me out with its stabs. Fake Out comes really, really close to taking me out. Actually, Fake Out might, Fake Out might be taking me out. I don't remember. Um, so I go into Arcanine uh, because I feel like the Fake Out is coming, and even if it's not, I can get an Intimidate off to lower its attack and then have a better chance of taking it out with the Alakazam. Bam! So I'm right. Now I have to sack out, sack out the Arcanine because I don't have a switch in to um, High Jump Kick, but Arcanine taps into its mystical powers and makes Mega Metacham miss the High Jump Kick. Arcanine thought of Shroom Raver here. He was like, I can't show up to a match, not get any kills, and just die without doing anything useful. So instead, Arcanine taps into his legendary powers and remembers that Shroom Raver will be watching and is like, I need to get a kill. So he dodges, he dodges that high jump kick and he kills the Mega Meta Cham. I'm going to go, I am going to go into detail as to why that matters, but let's go ahead and just finish this up because these are the last couple turns. Goes for the Volt Switch, doesn't kill him. Go for the Flare Blitz, it does kill. Arcanine getting two kills in a row when it shouldn't have gotten any. And that is the game. We are going to win 3-0 against Jack. Now, that was huge at the end of the game. Had he hit the high jump kick, Arcanine would have been dead. I had Alakazam and Electivire. At that point, I would have had to bring in Alakazam and go for the Shadow Ball. And basically at this point, it really just depends on how Jack played the end game. The game was up in the air. Either one of us could have won. Um, if I went into Alakazam, went for Shadow Ball, and he sacked off the Megmanectric, he would have been able to bring back in Megmanicham and go for the Fake Out, which I probably would have sacked off Electivire, brought back in Alakazam, and Shadow Ball was, I believe, an 18% chance to Oko, because Megmanicham was still at full health. So, if that series of plays happen, then Jack essentially has an 82% chance of winning the game. Um, however, you know, if I send out the Alakazam and he just lets Mega Metacham take a Shadow Ball right up, then Electivire comes in, it lives that rock switch in after I sack off the Alakazam, and then I just, you know, sweep the rest of the team with like Ice Punch or something. Um, and then I would have won. So basically, depending on how the endgame would have played out, it would have been either of our games. Um, but because of the high jump kick miss, um, it is what it is. And we got a 3-0 victory. That did not feel like a 3-0 victory. Um, I, I think I played a little bit too risky in certain plays. Um, I didn't calculate the risks as much as I should have, such as when I just sacked off Cabalion for no reason. Um, when I switched in Electivire onto a Scald, uh, and when I got greedy with Manaphy. So, there are definitely some things that I need to improve on, but we have a win, and that means that it's going to be, um, you know, we have some momentum going into week two of the season. Um, so, that's, ah, man, I don't know, there's just a lot to process about this battle, so I do really want to hear your thoughts about this battle, um, and everything like that. What you thought and what you thought about the ending. It was crazy. It was crazy. I don't know how many times Scald was used this battle, but not a single burn on either of our sides is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so there's that. There really wasn't any hacks at all. I wouldn't say any hacks at all because the crits didn't matter when they did happen. And they did happen on both sides. Useless crits happened on both sides. So none of it really mattered. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is a really good game. This is a really good week one match, and it gives me a little bit more confidence moving into my next battles, because I know a little bit more about my team and what it can do, what it can't do, and I'm going to use that to my advantage, and we are going to keep rolling on. So, next week, we are taking on Quill and the Juventes, um, so that's going to be a really interesting match. I've looked at his team, and it is 
kind of scary, not going to lie. So, uh, you know, I'm going to get prepping for that. Hopefully we can start the season off with two wins if we can. That's going to be great for us. But we're going to talk about next week when next week gets here. So if you enjoyed this week, make sure you let me know. Go ahead and leave a like, all that good stuff. Tell your friends to watch the video. I'll see you guys the next time. And thanks for watching. Until the next time, guys, stay sly.